Hi everyone, this is Chung Nguyen and today we're going to take a look at the user interface, voice command, and multimedia features and compare that between the Android 2.0 operating system on the Motorola Droid with Windows Mobile 6.5 and TouchFlow 3D on the HTC Imagio, also on Verizon Wireless. In a second video segment, we're going to explore email and calendar and a third video, the final video, we're going to look at the settings, programs menu, and the marketplace and how that differs. So let's go ahead and take a look. Let's go back to the lock screen actually. At the main lock screen at the bottom here, you have the day, date, and time. You also have a notifications here. If you do have notifications such as emails, missed call, or voicemail, you can tap on the lock here and it will pop down to show you how many and which notifications you have. Currently, we have no notifications, so it's not going to show anything. You can slide left or right on the main lock screen to go to the main home screen. Or if you have notifications, they should have individual lock icons themselves. So you can swipe those to go directly into to the application, such as if you have a missed call, it will launch the call application. Here we're at the main home screen, which gives you a TouchFlow 3D experience, which offers you also different tabs that gives you a widget-like experience so you don't have to individually launch applications such as um, the weather or the calendar application. It will give you a quick view. So here's the calendar. If you tap on the day, it will give you a schedule of what your um, appointments are. So this is our October calendar. Um, we're gonna go ahead and exit out of that and go here to the weather. And it does pull in using your GPS location, the weather, and this is the weather for Los Angeles, for Los Angeles, and it gives you a five-day view. So that's a quick look at the user interface here. Um, the user interface unfortunately falls a little short um, and isn't always as touch friendly as you see. So let's go ahead and dive deeper. And once you dive deeper, you'll see what I'm talking about. And we're going to go to the personal settings and we're going to go into phone. Here we're reverted back to a Windows Mobile 6.1 like experience here. And you see individual tabs here at the bottom and arrows, which are not too finger friendly. And so that's a little bit of a um, of a disadvantage with Windows Mobile 6.5 is that it doesn't completely skin all the individual applications to bring it up to date to a consistent UI feel. You also have voice command on here, which you can access by pressing and holding um, the send button here. So let's go ahead and do that. Open Windows Media Player. You can tell it to open applications, play songs by music or genre. You can tell it to say call and your contact name or dial a number. And you can also ask it for commands such as, what is the time? The time is 3.05 a.m. Um, but it doesn't allow you to search or navigate through programs such as the GPS. In multimedia, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the HTC implementation of multimedia on TouchFlow 3D. Here on the screen, you can flick through different pictures that you may have. Or if you hit on album, it will take you into an album-like view, which shows you pictures in a grid-like view. And we're going to go ahead and tap it again to select what we want to look at. We're going to choose the storage card. And if you tap on a picture, it will launch in landscape mode. And you can swipe left and right to change the picture. And here we have a play button, so that is a movie. Let's go ahead and play it. I have Lord of the Rings set up here. you tap on the screen, it will give you an on-screen control. Let's go ahead and fast forward through it a little bit. The movie seems like it starts out to populate it into a full screen mode, which takes up the screen, but we know this isn't a 16 by nine uh, screen, so let's go ahead and shrink it back. You do have the option of watching it in widescreen here, which is what it was encoded for. And if you don't like the black bars at the top and bottom, you can actually open it up. So. Um, you can have a full screen view. 
and fill out the screen that way as well. Go ahead and stop the movie. And this has been a quick tour of the user interface, voice command, and multimedia features on the Imagio running Windows Mobile 6.5. Let's go ahead and do the same for the Android 2.0 operating system. Here we have the main unlock screen, which shows you, um, you can set a, instead of a password, you can actually set a, um, a pattern to unlock it that only you would know. So if you enter the pattern, it will unlock it. Um, at the top here, you have the notification bar. You can't access notifications directly like you can with Windows Mobile 6.5 on the unlock screen. But after you unlock it, you can swipe down here and it will show you that you have a new notification and tapping on that opens up the email application, which we will cover in another video. But you can scroll through your emails that way. Here is the home screen. You do have three panels, which you can add widgets or shortcuts to. Here we have a widget to the financial stock market. We can go ahead and add another widget by tapping and holding and choosing widget on the pop-up. And we're gonna add an analog clock. To remove a widget, just tap and hold and drag it down to the trash. It will glow red and let go and the widget is gone. Programs are accessed by um, either tapping on the arrow here at the bottom, which will pull up a grid view of all your programs, or if you want, you can swipe up slowly to get a peek and swipe it down. Android also comes with voice command. It's a more ubiquitous voice command and is a combination of Tell Me, which is a Microsoft subsidiary, and also Microsoft Voice Command. So you can tap and hold on the microphone here and you can tell it to search for different things and it can search for your phone and then pulls up the search also on the internet as well. You can tell it to call a person. Let's go ahead and tell it to search, search for Starbucks. Starbucks. And then it should pull up the results in a browser interface here. And you can scroll through the results. You can also tell it to navigate to a certain location as well. So we're gonna go ahead and tell it to navigate to the Getty Villa. Navigate to Getty Villa. And it will pull up Google Maps with navigation which offers turn-by-turn -turn voice guidance, GPS navigation, which is nice. We'll go ahead and select this as our result. West on Moore Park Street toward Woodman Avenue. In 300 feet, turn right at Woodman Avenue. Go ahead and exit navigation here and go to the home screen. At the home screen, if you tap and hold on home, you have a task menu which brings up the six most recent applications that you open. Let's go ahead and open up gallery so that we can see some of the multimedia features. So here's our gallery. You can open up a picture. Unfortunately, you can't swipe, but if you tap on a picture, you can go ahead and scroll through to the next picture. And here we're at the movie, which is another, I don't know if it's the same Lord of the Rings clip, but if you tap on it and tap play, Go ahead and resume playing. Go ahead and fast forward. If you tap on it, it will give you additional on-screen commands. Unfortunately, this isn't coded to the proper screen resolution, so you do see black uh, bars at the top and the bottom, but you don't have the option to expand it to fill the screen, which is rather unfortunate for those who want to watch um, the thing, the movie using their full screen and not be bothered with the black bars. So this has been a quick look at Android 2.0 using, um, we're, we have taken a look at the user interface, voice command and multimedia and have compared um, those basic features to Windows Mobile 6.5. Thanks for watching.